Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is the last video in Crafty Michelle's um, gel press collab and all of the other ladies taking part today will be in the description box below so please go and check them out as well after you've watched this one. Um, so today I wanted to do three different ways in which you can um, use printed images in your gel press work. So the first one I'm going to show you is uh, direct painting and I've put my printed image below um, and I'm going to work on it now and paint a tulip. So um, I am going to work from the thing that I want in the foreground first and then I'm going to work my way back. So I'm just going to paint this petal here because it's in the front and because it's in the front I think I'm going to have my light sources direct on so it's going to be a little bit lighter than the other petals. I'm just going to layer up backwards. Now you want to make sure that your petals don't um, mix together as you're painting them otherwise you won't get a layered effect. Okay so while that one's drying um, I'm going to just write on my picture what order I want to do things in. So this is the first petal and then the second layer is going to be this middle one third layer I will do one on each side here, that will be layer 4, layer 5 and I'll also do this one on layer 4 and this one on layer 5 and hopefully as I'm working through you will be able to um, see what I mean. Okay, so I think this one's dry, so now I'm going to do the next layer. And to make sure that the layers are distinguishable when I pull the print, I'm going to put dark next to light, if that makes sense. So on this petal here, it would be darker in the crease, so I'm going to put dark here. And it doesn't matter if I overlap, because you won't see behind it. And then I'm going to work my way towards a lighter colour at the top.
just realised I forgot to press um, record. <laughs> so um, I'm doing the last layer, just the background. I did some stenciling off camera because otherwise the video is going to get really long. I'm just trying to give it a good coat. Not too thick, but everything covered. Now the trick to this is a thin layer of paint but um, you have to leave the paper on and let it sit for like five minutes. So now we can pull it but wait five minutes first. Okay so I'm ready. I don't think all of the layers will come off, but I'm just going to do my best to get at least the tulip up. This works. I found that doing this at a slight angle helps as well. some extra paint on um, here that's not dry so perhaps I should have left it a bit longer before I pulled it up Okay, I'm going to have to let it dry a bit longer. Okay, so I waited a bit longer. I'm going to see if it pulls up now. Oh my god, it actually worked. Unfortunately you can see a bit of black because my plate wasn't clean when I started but I think that's pretty cool. So that was the um, 
correct painting technique using a printed image underneath. And then the other techniques I have are to do with ink. So I will clean up and show you that. Okay, so the next technique is with ink and it's really, really simple. You just make a background and then take a print. But you take a print onto an image that you've already printed out. So I found this one from Pixabay and I thought it was like a cool mandala. So I'm going to do a background. You can add texture to your background and do all the things that you would normally do for inking. But um, I'm just going to put down like a base colour quickly. Because um, I don't want the video to be too long. But as I said, you can put down um, as much detail as you want in the background. Because I'm using uh, dye ink. It's translucent, so you will see the uh, picture in the background. It is important that you use dye ink because it will sink into the paper. And then that will allow you to do extra things, which I'll show you after I've done this one. So I'm just picking three colours here. You can do as many or as little as you want. You could even do a rainbow like last week. I've uh, forgotten what order I've done this in my. Okay. And then you want to brayer it. To smooth it out. You can keep your roll off sheets as well, they're really cool for die cutting from. And I like to just pounce up and down and go in the direction in which I lay down my uh, ink so I keep my gradient. Okay. Now, because this is copy paper, I can roughly see through it. I don't mind if I don't line it up properly though. And it really is as simple as that. Super fast, super fun. So just to show you the different variations you can get from that, I made some in advance. So um, some of them are using Fiji stamps. So I use these two from Julia's Cocktail Girl collection and I just I created a collage background of all the different digi stamps on my computer and printed them out. And I thought these would make cute birthday cards, especially this one, that would be fun. I did a guy themed one, which is just happy birthday repeated. And I did one that was like an ombre blue background, I don't, you probably can't see it, and then I just went over it with coloured pencils and coloured it in. So if you want a background colour and you can't be bothered to colour it all in, you could just do a one layer gel print with dye inks and then colour over the top with an opaque medium like coloured pencil. Um, and then just to show you that if because I'm using laser printing, you can also foil it after you've finished. And it comes out really pretty. So this was like an ombre background that I then used teal firmer web foil with. And I think it would look cool if you did this one and then foiled it as well. I haven't got around to it yet. And you can go back and foil it later. Like you don't have to do it right away. I think I left this one a few days before I decided to foil it. So I might go back and make this one gold. I think that the only thing you have to remember if you want to see your printed image is that you don't use a pigment ink because pigment sits on top of the paper whereas dye soaks in. That will also allow you to foil it if you want to. And then the last technique I'm going to have to explain because my toner ran out on the printer and I couldn't order a new cartridge in time. So it is basically the image transfer technique 
and um, as you can see my toner was running out so I'll just explain it. Um, it's the same as the magazine technique where you lay down like a thin layer of black paint but instead of using a magazine you use a printed image and the key to making it work is to have a toner cartridge that's actually full and you want to print on uh, 1200 dpi and the best quality you can and as long as you have a really dense black image you should be able to pull it up and this is the first one I did unfortunately I put too much paint on and I had a wet spot there which is why that bird didn't come up but I still like it and I'll still probably use it for something and this was another go I had before but as you can see my toner had started to run out so yeah that's three different ways in which you can use um, printed images with your gel press and have some fun I hope you guys enjoyed all of the different techniques they're a bit different um, a couple of them are with paint, one with ink so hopefully something for everyone um, Yeah. Please don't forget to go and have a look at the other videos in the description box below and thanks so much for sticking with me through this collab. Thanks for watching, bye!